This evening, the topic that I am going to be speaking on is how is she different? How is who different? She? Who is she? She is a believing female. How is she different from the others? What makes her a believing female? What makes her so important? What is different about her? Point number one, and we need to know this, a believing female is focused. She is focused. She has focus. Focus upon what? Focus upon the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She is focused upon the goal that she has, which is to earn Jannah, to earn paradise. She knows that this life is absolutely temporary. And she knows that she can go any minute. She can go to now, or she can go within the next five minutes, or within the next five years, or 50 years. So she knows that it is important for her to prepare for the day that she is to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is her focus. Whatever she does, she asks herself, will this please my maker? Will this be something that will earn the pleasure of my maker? Or will it be earning the wrath of my maker? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all our sisters and our brothers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all focus. Because this focus upon paradise and upon the pleasure of Allah is what makes us primarily different from the others who are focused upon worldly material items. When we say worldly material items, there are some who are focused upon a motor vehicle. Some are focused upon a kitchen, subhanallah. You know, you have the latest roti matic, have you seen it? Some are focused on that more than they are focused on their salah, subhanallah. I know the last lecture I mentioned it in, people sent me emails, please tell us where you can buy it. And I'm like, subhanallah, that is 20 rotis in one minute or in 20 minutes, I'm not too sure now. But we are more interested in good food than we are in paradise in Jannah, subhanallah. So, a mu'mina, she is different by the fact that she is focused upon paradise. She will try to achieve whatever she can in the dunya in terms of facilitating this life and making it easy for her to live here. But her prime focus is the akhirah. It is the pleasure of Allah. So if she can achieve the kitchen whilst she is pleasing Allah, she will do that. If she cannot, the kitchen is by the way. But Allah, the relation with Allah is never by the way. So focus on matters of the dunya sometimes leads us astray in the sense that when we begin to focus on a watch and this is what i want on a phone and this is what i want or for example on a perfume and this is what i need or a, an abaya this is what i'd like with everything bling bling on it subhanallah if that is our focus then we will be so happy and so excited when we have those accessories and that handbag and that mobile phone and those shoes and we can walk with that figure with that subhanallah uh, you know abaya looking so beautiful jump into that car and go into that home and it makes us so happy not realizing what did you do for Jannah, because Allah has given you five more minutes to spend with those items. Now what? Allahu Akbar. You have five more minutes to enjoy the house, the husband, the children, and everything else. Habibi, leave it, please. Jazakallah khair. Just, it's okay. Just leave it. We're enjoying the, 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 the cool wind, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. No, Habib, it's okay. So this is the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift to us that he has kept so many things in the world, but he has told a believing female and a believing male that your focus should not be the items that we have provided for you in the dunya. Many people when they want to get married, they don't realize that what we are focused upon is actually dunya. This man don't have a salary which is good enough for me or my daughter or so on and so forth. Not realizing, but he's got everything else. And perhaps he might live in a hut, but he will protect your, your daughter in such a way that the man who's living in a castle will not do. And who knows, the one in the castle might only have five more minutes to live or five years. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us all. This is why we say the hadith speaks of focus. Muhammad says, when proposals come for your daughters from those who are of deen, and those whose character is acceptable, allow them to be married. If you don't allow them to be married because you focused on something else, in that particular case, there will be fitna and fasad on the earth. And what is the fitna and fasad? Corruption and vice, chaos and sin. That is what is happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. 
So we are not saying that, you know, look for the poorest person in the dunya. But what we are saying is you can compromise when it comes to wealth. You can compromise when it comes to the type of car you're going to have and the house you're going to live in. But you will not compromise when it comes to the deen because you are a believing female who is focused upon the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might have a man, for example, who's wealthy, he provides everything for you. He has his bad habits, which you don't know about, which creep up later on to the degree that the children that we get may not be as focused as they should be because of the choices we've made for marriage or the choices that our parents have wrongly guided us towards making if they themselves were not focused. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the issue of focus. So to be focused on the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be focused on paradise and to be focused on the eternal life and to realize that this life is absolutely temporary is what differentiates a believing female from she who does not believe. Allahu Akbar. Remember this and remember it carefully. What are you focused on? Ask yourself every day. Some of us are just focused on having a degree in the dunya. We are not saying that's wrong. It's important that you are educated in the dunya, but are you doing it? Are you doing that and paying as a payment your link with Allah? If that is the case, you're at a loss. Your focus is not correct. But is that making you stronger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If yes, then alhamdulillah, you've achieved a lot. You know, we would like to achieve in the dunya and in the akhirah. You know the dua that Allah makes mention of in Surah Baqarah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh, our Rabb, grant us goodness in the dunya and goodness in the akhirah and safeguard us from the punishment of Jahannam or the punishment of the fire. So this is something amazing. This shows us focus that O oh Allah, as much as we would like to have a pleasurable, joyful, enjoyable or should I say a smooth life in the dunya, we would like to be focused upon the Akhirah in a way that we will achieve paradise no matter what happens in this particular world. I will not compromise my paradise. So I will get up for Salah, I will make sure I am dedicated and so on. Let's move on to some, some more of the points of differentiation and what makes her different. The next point we have closely connected to the first one, the issue of belief. Belief is in the heart. Belief cannot be seen by people. If I were to tell someone, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and so on. If I were to say that, I have just become a Muslim, which means I have declared my Islam, my submission openly. But people cannot gauge the level of my Iman and my belief. The belief is the next step, which would now build my link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my maker. I bear witness that he who made me is he whom I'm going to return to. He has absolute control of every aspect of my existence. So if I am unhappy, he owns my happiness. If I am poor, he owns my wealth. If I am sick, he owns my cure. I need to know this and I need to believe in it firmly. And this is what makes me focused. And this is what belief is all about. It helps us focus. So to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy, and to believe that Allah loves you. So when a sister believes that Allah loves her, she is different from others. She is different from those who don't believe in Allah to start with, or those who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not merciful. A'udhu billah. We all read the beginning of the Quran, and when we start off reading the beginning of any surah, we find Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, most forgiving, most forgiving, subhanAllah. Or should I say, most merciful, most merciful. Amazing. One is a specialized mercy and the other is an all-encompassing mercy. The first one is that which is all-encompassing and the second one is that which is a specialized mercy for those who have belief in that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need to believe that Allah loves you. Even if you are going through difficulty, my sister, Allah loves you. You are going through health matters and issues, Allah loves you. Be focused upon that, believe that, that is what makes you different from the others. Allah loves you so much that sometimes he, he gives you such a great gift known as a sickness which you might perceive to be negative. But your Iman and your, the fact that you are focusing and your belief makes you realize that it's actually a gift of Allah to draw you closer to Him. 
amazing. This is belief. So I'm convinced that Allah loves me. Even if I trip walking down from here, I'm still convinced Allah loves me. I'm convinced. I don't need to become upset if this fan does not work or it's making a noise. Or for example, I have a distraction on this. I don't need to get upset. I can rectify it with a smile and I can still be the happiest person ever. Because I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me an ability and it's him who gave me the ability. Had he not wanted it, I would not have had that ability. Amazing. This is Allah. This is the focus. This is what makes you a mu'min. This is what makes you different from other people. No matter what you have, it does not make you lose focus. Today, when we have a lot, we lose focus by sitting in front of the TV and watching Bollywood movies or Hollywood movies or Nollywood movies. Or if you come from Zimbabwe, Zollywood movies. And we're focused on that. Why? Because uh, dunya, mashallah, ma'ana. You know, we have everything. We have the whole world. We, we have a flick of a finger and the driver comes. We have a flick of the finger, the car is there. We have a flick of the finger and everything is there. We have a little phone call or a little tapping on the internet and the shopping is at home. Allahu Akbar. So now what's left? I just got to sit in front of the TV and enjoy myself and have a massage every day and you know, look at myself in the mirror and mikiyaj. Subhanallah, we're just interested in Mac and everything else. Why? Because we have lost focus. We've lost focus. So, some of us are more interested in making ourselves up than we are in living the real life and focusing on Allah and focusing on paradise. That face is going to be eaten by worms. May Allah protect us. But it's a reality. Allahu Akbar, that was quite a hard statement. But it's a fact, you have to face it. If you're focused, you will know, MashaAllah, I am allowed to look great, Alhamdulillah, because that's Allah's gift upon me. But if that is my focus, then I've lost focus. To be honest with you, I've lost focus completely. That shouldn't be my main aim of existence is the makeup. No, like I say, when Allah's blessed us with so many things and we've got good health, we want to show things. So Allah says, I can just take that away momentarily so that you realize that I have given you a gift and you realize refocus, come back to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. To believe and to be convinced in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also what makes a mu'mina different from others. What makes her different is that she is convinced in the power of Allah. Nothing is impossible for Allah. So if you are a person who has had no children, not at all, 14, 15 years have passed by, you will still continue making dua to Allah and having hope that one day He will provide you with what you are asking. Because you are different. You have conviction and you know that Allah has given you so much in the Quran to show you that others have delivered even after 50 years, 60 years, 80 years of their lives. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So a believing female is convinced as to the qudra and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe firmly, and the men as well, obviously this is a believer. We believe firmly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything. He can do absolutely anything. Nothing is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what I believe. That conviction is what cures you when you are sick. Do you know that? That conviction is what cures you when you are sick. And that conviction is what provides for you when you don't have. You, ha you are convinced because that is the power of Allah that comes in. And it is Allah who is the provider. Ultimately, it is always Allah who does that for us. When we make dua, we need to be convinced as we are supplicating our maker that Allah is going to provide this for me. Why should we supplicate if we are half-hearted saying, well, it might not be and maybe perhaps and so on. So many people who have had cancer, may Allah grant them cure, have been cured not by medicine alone, but by the will of Allah through his power, where he has given the ability to diagnose it at a certain stage when it was early enough to have cured it. Allahu Akbar. And I can tell you something else. Sometimes we are affected by that disease and yet through our dua, Allah cures it for us before we ever went for diagnosis. So we don't even know only the day we die and we meet Allah, we might know one day you were sick, but you had such a detrimental disease through your dua, we cured you before you even went to the doctor to get it checked and to diagnose it. Allahu Akbar. My mothers and sisters, I pause here for a moment and I divert slightly to say, remember one thing, when you are sick and ill, it is your duty incumbent upon you to seek medication. It is your duty. Do not rely only on dua. 
Dua is a part of it. The conviction in the power of Allah is definitely holistic, without a joke. But at the same time, when Allah has given you ability and capability and capacity to go out and seek medication, you must do that. You must go out. You must test yourself. You must check yourself. You must diagnose as part of your duty unto Allah. He has given you an amana, which is the body of yours. This body does not belong to you. It belongs to Allah. You need to look after it. If someone gave you a car to look after whilst they were out of the country and you happened to damage it, wouldn't you go and repair it? Before they came to say, this car doesn't belong to me. Before anything happens, I better drive it carefully. I better make sure everything is okay. If I've had a speeding fine or two, I better go and pay it up before this brother comes back or whoever comes back. And before I have to give the car back, the same applies to our bodies. They are not ownership of ours. So a believing woman does not just tattoo herself anywhere and everywhere because she knows that is haram. She does not just pierce herself anywhere and everywhere because she knows where the limits are. Allahu Akbar. Whereas when you have people who are not believers or sometimes their iman is weak, they don't even know. And sometimes they know, but they defy and they begin to do things, not realizing that this body is only a uniform given for your soul to exist in this temporary world for a little while. And Allah will take it away. So I normally say that Allah took a soul and put it into your body. So your body has worn the soul, it's the uniform of the soul. One day the, the, the body will take out that soul, the soul will come out by the will of Allah. You leave the body and the uniform gone down. You are no longer known by your name or the body is known as the body after that, not with your name. You know what that means? Every one of us, when we die, nobody's going to say, where's Muhammad? They will say, where is the body? Bring the body here. Is the body at home? Is the body there? They're not going to say, where is Khadija? Bring Fatima here. Bring Abdullah this side here or, you know, lower Abdullah into the grave. Nobody ever says that. They say, lower the body into the grave. Bring the body here. Bring the body there. Where is the body? How far is the body? What happened to the body? And so on. Why is it the body? Because the soul is gone. Have you ever thought of that? Well, it is a reality. A believing female focuses on that. So as much as we're interested in Mac and back at one stage, it's all the body. No longer us. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. What happened to that body? It's gone back to Allah. So me, what will happen to me? I've also gone back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the body will decompose in the soil by the will of Allah. But with me, I will return to Allah to answer for what I did with the little bit of time and whatever else he gave me in this world. And the test is for all of us. Parents make the lives of their children a misery sometimes. Why? They are not focused, not focused on Jannah. They are focused on pleasing community, society. What will my relatives say? What will my community say? How can you wear a hijab? How can you look like a nun? How can this happen? How can that happen? But are you focused on paradise? If you are, forget about the rest. They will come. They will say, wow, you did it. We can do it. SubhanAllah, they were waiting for you. But we are not focused enough and we're not strong enough. So we lose everything. So people begin to turn away from the deen because of our weakness. And that is a problem. May Allah grant us strength. My mothers and sisters, really, it is amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many gifts. And He tells us, use this whilst you are here. Imagine, this is one big examination room and we're allowed to cheat. How's that? It's like a big examination hall. You have an examination and all the result, all the answers are right in front of you. You can go and research, you can go and check and then write the answer. Nobody's going to tell you that you've cheated because it's in this big hole. Allah says, but you better get the answer right. So go out and read. A lot of us, the answers are there, but we don't even want to read the Quran. No. Why? Because I'm busy with learning my song. What song are you busy learning? Subhanallah. I don't even want to say what song. So what happened to the Quran? Uh, I'm still quite young, you know. That's the answer we get. I'm still quite young, you know. Why? Because my dad told me that when you turn 30, that's when you can start learning the Quran. Allahu Akbar, 30? Allahu Akbar. You might not see another 30 minutes. Then what will happen? This is what makes a believing female different from others. She knows what she wants. She knows the temporary nature of this dunya. She knows the temporary nature of her body and her existence. And she knows that she will change from this particular world to the next in a different existence altogether, which means in another place altogether by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
to believe in the power of Allah and the fact that He can do anything and everything. When a person is sick and ill, we make dua. Together with that, we do what is known as dawa. Dawa meaning the ilaj, the cure, to visit the doctor, to try our best. Then we ask Allah, we cry to Allah and we are convinced Allah will cure us. You know when you find someone terminally ill and the doctors tell you that, okay, there are two days left. Many of us have been told you have had two days left. 20 years down the line, we are still as fit as a fiddle. What happened? Well, medicine was wrong. That's what happened. Well, the truth is, it's the power of Allah. We try and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided. But even after 20 years, you still have to go. You still have to go. So Allah gave you another 20 years to pack away more good deeds in your bank. As many good deeds as I can. You know, when we're young, we don't have a bank account. At a certain stage, people start opening bank accounts. They begin to work. The salary goes in. They want to save. The savings become big and big and huge. And they get so happy. Why? Because Rasidna subhanallah wasal ila asharat alaf. Our bank account is now 10,000 nah, dinars. You know, the dinar is so strong. Wow. 10,000, that's a beautiful Rasid. I can do something with it. Not realizing when Rasid akhil akhirah. Where is your bank balance for the akhirah? Where is it? What has happened to it? Nobody is saying don't pack away money for the dunya, but don't give preference to it because your focus is on the akhirah. Every dinar that you have packed away for the dunya, you need to pack away good deeds worth more than that for the akhirah. Because the akhirah is everlasting. As for those dananir, they will not help you for more than another 10 to 20 years. <coughs> when you get a job, finally you settle down. How old are you? 40 years old. You've now settled and everything is okay. The average age of people who are now considered people who have settled down and now they're looking after their children and preparing for their kids. 40 years. How many years have you left? If you're lucky, you have another 30 years to go. And then what? Then I need to get into the Akhirah. Then, then everything I did which was focused upon the Akhirah will come to benefit me. So don't lose focus. That Salah that you read, the dress code you had, the goodness you, you had, the, 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 all the good that you did will come to help you. May Allah protect us. And the Tawbah you engaged in, something powerful. The problem with us, we lose conviction in Allah's power. So we think Allah's not powerful. And we think that He's not going to grab hold of us when we do things that are wrong. And when we, when we are astray, if a person doesn't read Salah, it doesn't affect Allah, it affects them. If a person does not want to dress appropriately, believe me, it does not affect Allah, it affects them. And it definitely affects them. But they don't realize. And it will affect them. Subhanallah. When a person wants to engage in bad habits, it will affect them. It doesn't affect Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا تَنْفَعُهُ طَاعَةُ الطَّاعِئِينَ وَلَا يَضُرُّهُ مَعْصِيَةُ الْعَاصِينَ The good deeds of those who do good, they don't help Allah. And the bad deeds of those who do bad do not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for us. This is us. It's all about us. Subhanallah, it will help me or it will harm me. So I better be focused and I have a beautiful way out, a tawbah. I can turn to Allah at any time and say, Allah, forgive me. Let me gain focus again. You know what? This might be my last few days in this dunya. It may be my last few days in the dunya. So it's important for us to understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something else that makes her different is that she believes firmly in the taqdeer and the destiny that Allah, the decree of Allah that He has chosen for her. Sometimes we make a lot of dua and Allah does not want to give us something. We are convinced that that was the best thing that could have happened. That is a believing female. May Allah grant us all shifa and cure. Sometimes we have a disease and Allah says, I don't want you to be cured from this because I want you to die in a condition that you are the closest to me. So die with a smile. Thanking Allah, Ya Allah, you made me sick. I made tawbah. I thank you. I'm really concerned about going into the akhirah. But Ya Allah, my last few days were the best because I constantly made tawbah. You gave me such a chance. I'm far better off than one who just died suddenly in a huge car crash and had no chance to engage in tawbah. Wasn't that Allah's gift for you? So when we get to the akhirah, we are convinced that Ya Allah, you gave me such a powerful gift to be able to get to a sickness which brought me closer to you. Sometimes you lose a child, sometimes you lose a family member, sometimes you go through a divorce, sometimes you go through some form of difficulty, sickness, financial loss, marital turbulence, whatever else you're going through. A, a child who's not obedient, whatever else, Allah says, 
That is for you to get closer to me. If that brought you closer to Allah, it was a gift of Allah upon you. That's what we are focused on. That's what we know. That's what we realize. Because this is why we are brought closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through difficulty and calamity. And like I say, we make dua with conviction, but we are also convinced that if we don't receive what we are asking for, that that too was the best. Ajaban li amril mu'mini fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khayr. The Prophet says, amazing are the affairs of a true believer. All his matters are always full of goodness. All of them. He's never upset. In asabathu sarra'u shakara, fakana khayr Allah. When goodness comes in his direction, he is thankful to Allah. So it's, it was better for him because it brought him close to Allah. How many of us, when goodness comes to us, we draw closer to Allah? If we don't, we are not true mu'mineen. Because the hadith says, li amril mu'min. Amazing are the affairs of a believer. So if we are not, if we, if, if we have a promotion at work and a salary increase and we have millions and billions, our business deals are going right and we've bought the cars we wanted, the houses we wanted, the luxuries we wanted, the perfumes we wanted, the accessories we wanted, the abayas we wanted, whatever else we wanted. We've got all of that, but it did not bring us closer to Allah, then we have lost. We cannot call ourselves true believers. We might be believers, but not true believers. Because this hadith says, when goodness comes to the direction of a true believer, you find him thankful, it brings him close to Allah, shakar. A shukr means a person who acknowledges the gift of Allah by worshipping Allah and obeying Him. That is the meaning of shukr. To thank Allah, to acknowledge from Allah by obeying His instruction. Imagine someone says, oh I thank you Allah, but you are not dressed properly. That's not thankfulness. Imagine a, you give a person a million dinar and they say thank you very much, thank you very much, and they know that you don't like, for example, uh, let's let me give you a simple example. They know that you don't like sour milk, for example, just a thumbs up, just an example off the cuff, and they come to you after you've given them a million dinars with a whole pint of sour milk and tell you, please accept this as a gift, and you're so upset, but you know I don't like this, you know it's bad. That's one example. The other example is, imagine you give a person a million dinars and they come back and throw eggs at your house. What would happen? Is that gratitude? But they've told you, thank you, thank you, really I appreciate it. Their mouth said something, but their deeds are showing you something else. Why do we do that with Allah? When He's given you your life, your breathing, your eyes. Your eyes can see without a little knob on the side focusing somewhere. No, your eyes can see absolutely everything by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are automatic focused. Your ears are for automatic. You know, you, you can hear without having had a knob on your earlobes, trying to twist it around like it was an old radio that people used to listen to. No, amazing. And yet we are not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where are we? What is happening to us? We are losing focus. We don't even know, we don't even realize. So my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to understand when we make a dua to Allah, when we call out to Allah, through His gift sometimes, He will not give us what we want. Because He knows that it's better for us. Don't become upset. The ending of that hadith says, وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ A true believer, when something negative befalls them, or reaches them, or touches them, or they are harmed by something, they are patient, they are forbearant, they persevere, they don't lose hope. So it is better for them. It's better for them. What's better for you? It's better for you to be patient. Don't ever question Allah. Ya Allah, why me? Why did my child have to go? Why did I have to suffer this cancer? Why did I have to be affected by AIDS? May Allah protect us all. May Allah grant us cure even miraculously. Amen. Why did I have to be this? And why did I? No, don't ask that question. You thank Ya Allah, if this is what you want, if this is how you want me to go, I do not compete with you, you are my maker. But I ask you to cure me through your mercy and your power. That's the proper way. Ya Allah, if this is how you want me to go, I'm not going to compete with you because you are my maker. You made me in the first place. So you, I belong to you, you own me totally. You own me completely, Ya Allah. But I beg you to grant me cure, Ya Allah, from this disease I have. I mean, that's the way we should be looking at it. I don't want to compete with the decree of Allah, but at the same time, I can never ever. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Whilst we don't want to compete with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
We should be making dua that Allah grant us the cure and Allah open our doors. No one wants to die, but everyone is going to die. Like I always say, how many people want Jannah? Put up your hand. Everyone. Who wants to die now? Put up your hand. No one. How are you going to go to Jannah? If you're not going to die. Well, you might say, well, I don't want to die right now. Believe me, the weakness of man, no matter when death comes to him, he's always upset. But then why are you making, ya Allah, grant me Jannah, grant me Jannah. Allah says, okay, this is your Jannah. He say, but ya Allah, grant me a long life. I don't want to die, ya Allah. I don't want to die, ya Allah. So what happened to the Jannah? Come on, we want to give it to you. Tuhfatul mu'min al to the gift of a true believer, is actually death because now you're going to get what you want. It's like a child saying, oh, ma'am, make me first in class. Okay, I worked so hard, I'm first in class. I need the prize. When is the prize giving? Oh, it's on Sunday in the evening. I'm not going to come. I'm not coming. Because why? I don't want to go. It's night time. Allahu Akbar, when are you going to get your prize? So we need to think about it carefully. Death is something you have to go through. al mawtu babun wa kullun nasi dakhiluhu. Death is a door and every single person is going to go through it. But the question is, have we prepared for it? Have we tried? Have we been focused upon it? Or are we just focused upon this and that and so on and so forth? You know, we have our schools and mashallah, our children are doing very, very well in the school. My child can read the book with the eyes closed now, but come to Quran. They don't even know a word. Come to what the religion is supposed to teach. They don't know a thing. And Allah has only written 14 years for that child. In 14 years, the child is going to go. So when the child goes, may Allah protect us all. But it's happened. This is reality. We need to talk about it. And we need to let it wake us up. Because without it, we won't wake up. So 14 years later, your child is gone. Now, everyone is going to be bragging in the, in, 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 to say, wow, the child was first in class for so many years. The child was very intelligent. The child was this, the child was that. The, the child was top in mathematics, top in this, top in that. But you busy sitting there lamenting, Ya Allah, the child is in the grave. In the grave, we've never heard that the angels will come and ask you, what were your results for mathematics? Is that what we were taught? So whilst we are importantly looking quite focused upon the dunya and the secular education, we should not lose focus upon that which is more important. Allahu Akbar. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Surah Al-A'la, powerful. It's read almost every week in the masjid, in Jumu'ah. And Allah says, nay, you have given preference to the dunya, yet the akhirah is better and it is everlasting. So that which was not everlasting, we focused on it. Why? Because we were lost. I am not at all calling for us to take our children out of the schools, no ways. I probably went to some of the best schools that were available to me. But all we are saying is be focused. Be focused on something greater. Do not do one at the expense of that which is more important. That's what we're saying. That's all. There's no further statement. So you can have the highest education. When your child qualifies as the top surgeon in the entire world, you can be so excited because they are known as a Muslim surgeon. Allahu Akbar. Not just as a surgeon who's shy of his or her Islamic identity. Oh, then what did we do? We're not prepared for the Akhirah. So we are convinced, inshallah, that Allah will help us, Allah will guide us. We also accept the taqdeer that Allah has chosen for us. That's what makes us different. We have to accept it. But we don't blame taqdeer for our failure. We don't blame predestiny and the decree of Allah for our failure. If I was lazy and I did not work hard and then I failed, I need to have a little bit of the blame. You know, sometimes you have people, they tell you, make dua that I get married. You know, you make dua, I've got a daughter, make, make dua, Allah gets her married. And they don't give you the other side of the story that you've had proposal after proposal after proposal after proposal. But whatever Allah sent to your door, you just kicked it out. You just kicked it out. If you have a reason to, up, to obviously decline, no problem you may. But for no reason, you don't have that. So you've made such a big blunder by turning away what Allah sent. Now when it's late, you're saying, subhanallah, you know, make dua, make dua. But Allah says, I sent you so much, but you threw it back. What should I do now? 
Allahu Akbar. Sometimes we blame taqdeer, but it was my taqdeer. Allah says, hang on, you are also to blame. Like a man who came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, and he had stolen, they wanted to cut his hand. He says, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, I believe in predestiny. And it was this time that I was going to steal, so how can you cut my hand? Because it was this time already written next to my name. Intelligent. But Amir al-Mu'mineen was one up. Even more intelligent. He says, oh, he tells the Jallad, that you know what, go ahead with this execution or do whatever you have to because it was predestined that we were going to cut his hand as well. Look at that. It was predestined that we were going to cut his hand as well. You want to play games? Well, we can tell you the reality. This is why we say, Allah sends you a lot. We turn it away. We are to blame as well. But don't let it depress you because you can always pick up from a lesson such as today's. You can always pick up, make tawbah to Allah and start afresh. Go again, try. Don't make the same foolish mistakes as the past. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He open our doors. So like I said, don't blame destiny for your failure. But when things have happened to you, where you've tried your best and still it was out of your hands and so on, and something has occurred, you will surrender to the decree of Allah. You've been for every form of chemotherapy, every form of cure, you've tried this, you've tried that, still you are suffering and now you are in your last. May Allah grant us all goodness and Jannah. You need to embrace the fact that I'm going to need my Allah and I hope in His mercy. Because if I were to ask you, are you going to enter paradise through your deeds or through the mercy of Allah? The correct answer is only and solely through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have hope in the mercy of Allah. That's why I said one thing that makes her different is she believes firmly that Allah loves her. Allah loves her. Then we have the issue of purity. A believing female is always pure. Pure in what? Pure in absolutely everything. In the way she speaks, in the way she dresses, in her interactions, in her company, in her heart and in her mind. Purity of the heart. So the qualities are removed of jealousy, hatred, and this love of gossip, the love of sin. Everything is taken out. That's what makes it different. So she's not jealous. If another sister looks more gorgeous, she's happy. MashaAllah. Wow. Alhamdulillah, sister, Allah's blessed you. MashaAllah. Yes, I'm not jealous. But those who are focused on the dunya, do you know what they would say? No way. She can't be looking better than me. Not at all. I'm not going to speak to her. Then we go around spreading rumor about her. We make life difficult for her. And then she cries and she's depressed and she becomes this and that because neither is she focused nor are we. We're busy fighting a little battle in the dunya, not realizing that as soon as you clock the age of 40, your first wrinkle comes in. Unless you're living in Bahrain. Allahu Akbar. In Bahrain, I think it's at 50. May Allah protect us. So... This is what happens, my mothers and sisters, we cannot be focused on little matters. We cannot be focused on these small things, subhanallah. We cannot be jealous of one another, no. We cannot start envying, you know, they've got a car, I need the same car. Well, you know what, she wakes up for Fajr and Tahajjud every morning, where are you? Where are you? Watching movies until 12 at night, on the internet, busy with whatever else. Now you have line and we chat and we don't chat and everything else is there. And what do we do? We're busy on that until 2 in the morning. We go to sleep. When it's time, well, the Mu'addin calls out and he says, Hayya al And we're busy heading in another direction. In fact, he says, As-salatu khayrun min an Salah is better than sleep and we're just in our beds at that particular time. What happened to the salah? Gone. Then we are jealous of the sister who's got. How? That's loss of focus. So what makes her different is she is focused on purifying her heart. She knows that I need to purify this heart. I will take out from it jealousy, hatred for others, deception. I will take out from it malice, any form of evil that is in it, the love of sin, the love of the dunya that exceeds the love of Allah is very, very bad. It is actually completely forbidden. If you love the dunya more than you love Allah, there is a problem. So if trying to earn the comfort of this world, we are earning the displeasure of Allah, we have done wrong. And we need to remember this and we need to know it. So purification of the heart, 
Purification of the mind is extremely important as well. She is different because her mind is pure. When she sees things, she doesn't jump into conclusions that are negative. Rather, she jumps into the most positive conclusions. Her mind is pure. She, she has a clean relation with people. She has clean understanding of what's happening. And when she communicates with people, it's very pure. And this is why we say another point is purity of your companionship. What makes her different is her friends are all pure people. When it comes time for salah, they're all fulfilling salah. When they're going out, they're all dressed appropriately. That's what makes her different. That is what makes her different. Otherwise, what's the point? May Allah protect us. So to vet your friends and to make sure that you mix with those who are going to help you achieve that which you are focused upon in terms of the akhirah, that is what makes her different. Purity of companionship. Your purity of interactions. You don't just interact with anyone and everyone because you know that Allah created you and He knows best how your machine operates. Simple way of wording it. Someone's made a Toyota, they will tell you how the machine operates. You will follow the instruction because you know Toyota has put in this and this is how you operate it. So when Allah made you and me, we are more sophisticated than a Toyota. So He sends the Quran and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam to us in order to tell us how we will be operated in order to achieve success and the best mileage from our fuel. And yet we want to turn away thinking, no, I can interact and intermingle and I can do what I like with who I like because you know what? I'm an adult and I'm responsible. And Allah says, hang on, you don't know. The heart and the mind are the most powerful organs Allah has blessed you with. Never ever give control of them to anyone besides Allah. Otherwise you will be hurt and hurt very badly. A lot of people are struggling and suffering, depressed because they gave their hearts away to someone they met on the net. And that person just used and abused. Can I tell you? There are a lot of people who suffer because there was a password. There was a password made up of eight characters that was used in order to use them, to get to them, to abuse them. What's that password? I love you. Eight letters. And he continues telling you, I love you, I love you. And he's lying. He doesn't even know what love means. He's not focused at all. If he knew what it meant, he wouldn't be telling it to you. He would be upright. So that was the password. Once he clicked password, did, 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 enter. Choo, straight into your heart. Ooh, I love you too. Wow. Allah protect us. Then what happened? We are lost. We are gone. Because a year down the line, we are crying, we are depressed. And you can't even tell my father or my, my mother nothing because they don't have a clue what was going on and they will tell you, you're a fool. Allahu Akbar. But it's their fault as well. They did not play a role big enough in your life to know what was going on. This is why we say, if you're focused, you will know your children are a ni'mah. You must be focused upon them as well. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who placed a duty on your shoulders to look after your kids. That's what makes her different. She is focused. We're going to get to that inshallah. So don't allow this password. Don't allow this password that people utter to be a password straight into your heart because anyone could say that and press enter and that would be the right password. And so now we are caught, we are hooked. And what happens? Shaitan's got grip of us. Like I say, and I'm repeating this, the heart and the mind are the most powerful organs Allah's given you and blessed you with. Do not allow people to control that. Nobody shall control that besides Allah. Don't hand it over to someone. No, it belongs to Allah. We will only do with the heart and the mind that which will please Allah. Yes, so when you're married, you have a spouse, alhamdulillah. Within the limits, you will be able to give a portion of your heart and your mind too by the will of Allah. Why? Because that's what pleases Allah. But if you give it elsewhere, believe me, you're not focused. It's going to come back. And believe me, I'm a counselor. I know what I'm talking about. It comes back to haunt you because everything that's rosy, the clubs and the nightclubs and the glamour and the nightlife and the parties, people are focused on parties. Come Friday night, they're at a party. What party? Well, we went to a party, we had fun and we danced and we, we had music and everything else. What happened? You're not focused on the akhirah, not at all. Did that party help you at all? No. What do you want me to sit and read the Quran on a Friday night? Allahu Akbar. What an answer. What an answer. No. May Allah grant us goodness. How can you leave the home in the morning without having read one verse of the Quran? How? But we do. 
What did I say? One verse of the Quran, I challenge you. Do you want to make a change in your life? Before you leave the home every morning, please, can we promise one verse of the Quran? Let's put up our hands. Will we read one verse of the Quran before we leave our homes in the night? Alhamdulillah. Believe me, it will change your life. It will change your life. And read it with its meaning. Understand what you've just read. And you'll see the words of your maker, the one who made you. If you think you're falling in love with this one and that one because of how nice they look and how hot they are and how sharp they are and how wealthy they are and how beautiful they look when they're walking and talking and so on. Believe me, the one who made them should primarily be the one whom you are in love with completely. That's what it is. But we lose focus. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made us in the first place. That's what makes her different. Subhanallah. So we spoke about interactions, purity of interactions, purity of companionship, purity of the heart and the mind. That's what makes her different. Purity of her dress. Because she knows when Allah has instructed me to dress in a specific way, which is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And Allah knows why He has told that to us. So what makes her different is she does not compete with the law of Allah. Not at all. She knows, if Allah told me this, I will follow it because I am the creature of Allah. I want paradise. I want Jannah. And to be honest with you, I will do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of me. And that's it. That's what makes her different. We don't want to compete with Allah. No, I'm still young. I can move around naked. I can do whatever I want. I can show my legs. I can do this and do that. Well, the one who's attracted to you to marry you would have been attracted to your legs. Then what will happen? When he sees legs better than yours, he's now attracted to those. Same applies to your hair. I always like to say, you know the shampoo, everyone wants to show how nice it looks when the wind is blowing on my hair because I've got thick hair. Suddenly you start losing the hair. That's Allah tapping your shoulder telling you, put on a scarf. Allahu Akbar, put on a scarf. And you, you, you really don't want to? Well, we take out a little bit more of your hair. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us shifa and cure. Not always the case, but I'm just giving you an example. Don't be offended. And if he was attracted to you because of your hair, wait until you were expecting. You might lose a little bit more hair, then he might look at someone else's hair. Then there's a problem in the home. Why? We were not focused in the first place. He must marry me because of my deen, my akhlaq. Those two things can get better, not worse. Not to say that he must not look at what I look like. That's correct, you need to. But that's not the focus of it. I can compromise a little bit here and there when it comes to looks and size and age and so on. Those are all things I can compromise. But when it comes to the deen and the khuluq, I don't want to compromise. That's what it is meant by it. Then we are focused on purity of speech. What makes her different is she doesn't swear. So do you swear? Allahu Akbar. What makes her different is she doesn't hurt people with her tongue. When we say hurt people with a tongue, meaning utter vulgar words, utter falsehoods, accusations, gossip. She is away from gossip. That is a true believer. If she's not, there's a problem with her iman. She is pure from backbiting. That's what makes her different. What makes her different is she doesn't backbite. When others are backbiting, she can get up and say, my sisters, I love you so much. We are busy backbiting. I'm going to leave. Please phone me when you are stopped or when you have stopped backbiting so that I can return and we can discuss something more positive. And you walk away. And they're like, what? Did she actually just walk out? They can say what they want. They've learned the lesson. So if they feel hurt because you were upright, the, the moral that they took is that you were focused upon the pleasure of Allah when they were focused upon chatting about others. So what makes her different is she's worried about her life. And if she's worried about others, it's only in a positive way, not in a negative way. So I'm worried about the poor. I'm worried about the needy. I'm worried about those who are astray, how I can get the message across to them. But I'm not ever a person who will start bothering about this person committed this sin. So let me spread it across the globe. Did you see what she did? And you know, this one did that and that one did this. That's not my business. This is what makes her as a believing female different. She considers all this a sin. And she knows. Someone who carries tails will not enter paradise easily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So we don't want to be carriers of tails. My mothers and sisters, I really hope that we can take a page from today's lesson. I really hope we can. 
We can change our lives. Believe me, we can change our focus and we can become the happiest of people. Because as I say, who is the owner of happiness? It is Allah. And Allah alone owns happiness. All these temporary pleasures are exactly that. Temporary pleasures. That's what they are. But the ultimate pleasure, that is Allah. That is the focus we should be upon. And this is why we say, change your focus back to Allah. You will be a happy person. Goodness comes, you're happy. Sadness comes, or should I say, evil comes and you're still smiling at the taqdeer of Allah that He has chosen for you. And you go through with a lot of patience and Allah will reward you for the patience. Like Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah recompenses those who engaged in sabr without limits, unlimited. Get what you want. Why? Because you were happy at what we chose for you. So be focused, be happy. Be happy with what Allah has apportioned for you. What makes her different? She is focused to work hard on certain aspects. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So we've spoken about the purity of speech and we've only touched on it. Obviously, there are details that you would perhaps want to add on it on your own. You would know what is included in the term purity of speech. We don't lie. We are upright people. We want to utter that which is good, that which will be written next to our names as goodness. We will read the Quran. It is the best of speech. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have the point I'm making mention on about working very hard to do what? To serve Allah, to serve my husband, to serve my family, to serve my children, that's including my family, and my community and the ummah at large, and humanity at large, but that's the order. So now people tell you, no, he must serve me. Who, who am I to serve him? Well, hang on, there are rights on both sides. Nobody is saying that you do not have rights. Nor is anyone saying he does not have rights. But the term used is work hard on your marriage. Work very hard. Laziness is one of the biggest components of the breakages of marriages. Laziness, lack of dedication, lack of focus, wasting time with other things that are not important. Today, people are wasting their times on mobile phones so much that if they spent one tenth of the time smiling at their spouse like a mad person, they would still solve the problem. Forget about your phone. Ten minutes, look at him and smile. That's all. Believe me, he will just look at you and smile back. Allahu Akbar. You solve the problem. Allahu Akbar. Obviously, I'm telling you something that's on a lighter note. But the point being raised is we spend so much time on items that are futile. People whom we don't know, we will never know, we'll never meet. We haven't a clue who they are. Probably it's a person who's cheating me on the other side, pretending to be someone they are not, and so on. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given me a gift of a husband and a spouse or children and so on. And I spend no time with them. Allahu Akbar. And this doesn't mean that the men should not be dedicated as well. They too should be extremely dedicated. You have no excuse. You know, we say, don't suspect your spouse. But we also say, don't give your spouse reason to suspect you. Both of them are equally important. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us work in our marriages. Too many people are unhappy for petty reasons, petty issues, things that can be resolved and solved. Why? We're not focused. I don't realize I've got a few more days in the dunya. What am I trying to do? I've got children to raise. I've got a, a qabr to prepare for, a grave to prepare for. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us focus. So that's what makes her different. She knows. She knows that a sacrifice is required of me to serve. To serve who? To serve the cause that Allah has instructed me to serve. May Allah bless us and make us of meaningful benefit to everyone around us. The last point I would like to mention this evening. What makes her different is that she is not enslaved by the adverse environment around her. I touched on this at the beginning. Let me say it again. She is not enslaved by brand names, by trends. Imagine you have a trend. People are doing things, so we all want to do that. Everyone has their hair and it comes down to the front and it's painted pink. So everyone has to paint it pink. Why? Because that's what Beyonce did. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. If that is the system of operation, we've lost focus. So what makes her different is she is original. That's what makes her different. She is original. She is herself. 
She knows I'm a believer. I, I owe my life and my existence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't owe it to the trends around me that are un-Islamic. If there is a good trend of people who are reading the Quran, people who are engaging in halaqat and engaging in different forms of learning and getting closer to Allah, then that is a brilliant trend, mashallah. But we are talking of the evil trends around us. A, a believing woman is never ever enslaved by the trends. Rather, she is original. She remains on the same thing, no matter what. The world can come up with all sorts of things. Do you know, if you take a look at the shoes, subhanallah, may Allah protect us. A lot of women are guilty of focusing on shoes. So when you open the cupboard, you have 45 pairs of shoes. You have the clogs and the court shoes, and you have the high heels and the slops and the sandals and so on. Pink and green and orange and purple and mauve. Like I say, I don't even know what color that is. I just heard it. But they've got all the colors. Those shoes are not helping them walk towards paradise. Why? Because they're not focused. I'm focused on shoes. When you get to the grave, are they going to ask you how many pairs of shoes did you have? Is that what's going to happen? Not at all. No way. Your shoes are so irrelevant that you are buried without them. Perhaps your children are fighting this pair I'm going to take. No, I'm going to take. Okay, you take one, I take one. May Allah safeguard us. I'm not saying you're not allowed to have shoes, please. Just now we'll see everyone barefoot. Allahu Akbar. But are you focused on shoes? Because it's the trend. They wear this type of shoe, now I've got that one. They wear that type, I've got that. You can operate with a shoe that's beautiful, comfortable, lovely, and it serves the purpose of your fit. Do you know, a lot of sisters, sadly, have calluses on their feet and blisters because they are using shoes that they do not fit into, that are so uncomfortable, but just because they want to wear shoes that are acceptable in the eyes of those who are the slaves of the trends and the brand names, they would do that. So if that's the case, we have a bit of panel beating to do by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies to your dress code. The same applies to everything else. We don't need to be. Or what makes her different is, she is not enslaved by the trends and the brand names and so on. She's not enslaved by entertainment and parties and nightlife and what have you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be focused on the akhirah. May He help us be focused on that which He would please Him. And may He take us there. And may He make us the best of people who have the best of character. My mothers and sisters, my brothers and fathers who are here this evening, mashallah, a beautiful evening in this beautiful city, in this beautiful country of Al-Bahrain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us together for a reason. And the message I've delivered for you is pertinent to me to start with and thereafter for every single one of us. May Allah grant me humbleness and humility and the same to every one of us. May He make us love one another, the pure true love which is for His sake. Someone asks, what is the meaning of loving you for the sake of Allah? To be honest, we could translate it to mean, I love you in such a way that everything from you that will bring me closer to Allah, I love the fact that it is in you. By the will of Allah, you will help me get closer to paradise. And anything that is negative, I will help you recognize it and I will help you eradicate it because that is the love in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for the pleasure of Allah to get closer to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that particular love. We are here only and solely for His sake. I hope and I pray what I've said is not just entering one ear and exiting the next, but inshallah, it is something that will meaningfully change my life, make me focus, make me refocus, make me look back into my life and change a few things such that the day I die, I tell myself, Ya Allah, you've given me such a beautiful life, time to prepare for the day I'm meeting with you. Here I am, Ya Allah, take me with the mercy of yours, grant me Jannah. May Allah grant us the Shahada the day He takes us. I mean, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the good words of the of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the day he takes us away. May he make it easy for us to go and may he be very, very merciful upon all those whom he's taken away. And may he be merciful upon us the day he takes us away. May he grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bearing in mind that we would only deserve it through his mercy and through the trial. May we all be from amongst those who can try to be focused because that's what makes all of us different from those who are totally hopelessly unfocused may allah protect us all wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanak allahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu